The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today for this Aspire HR Live webinar event, SAP HR Payroll Reports and Interfaces with that ABAP Programming in Microsoft Excel. My name is Katie Brown. I'm Marketing Manager here at Aspire HR Labs. And I will give you a quick rundown of what to expect over the next hour, and then introduce Brian Collette, our speaker, and then he will kick it off. So uh, today's webinar is being recorded and should last about an hour. If you would save your questions until the end, um, or if you have any pressing ones, you can put them to me uh, throughout the webinar. Or if you have any problems or technical issues, you can put them in the question bar as well. Um, sound is OK? All right. Um, Again, if you have any questions, that's the place to go. So, Brian, why don't you kick us off? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Let me introduce you. Um, <laughs> Brian Cullet is managing partner here at Aspire IGR Labs. Uh, he leads us to innovate world-class solutions on the HANA Cloud platform for data integration and for SAP HR to inspire employees to engage in their organization's mission, which is so important for success. With that, he brings 22 years of HR technology development experience and 17 years of combined SAP HCM and success factors experience. He believes that people are the source of any organization's success, and the role of HR technology is an enabler of those people. All right. Now, Brian, off to you. Thank you, Katie, and I appreciate everybody joining us today to uh, attend this uh, webinar on SAP HR payroll reports and interfaces without ABAP programming and Microsoft Excel. I know it's a, it's a good topic. It's a topic that many people are interested in. It's one that is uh, very heavily attended for us. So I know it's something that uh, is a major pain point for, for everybody attending here. So our agenda for today is that I'm going to do a brief overview of who is Aspire HR, uh, and then we'll go into a short uh, presentation section on how we dramatically simplify SAP HR payroll reporting and interfaces with our employer reporter tool. Then we'll dive into the system and do a live demonstration of both running reports, of creating reports, and testing reports. And then we'll finish up with questions from the audience. So Aspire HR is focused on the crossroads of SAP services and the world of HR. Uh, we were formed 16 years ago uh, by Joe Hillesheim, and he formed it with the idea that the world needed a better partner, a SAP partner, fo focused exclusively on this crossroads um, because he didn't feel like there was a, a um, solution provider in the marketplace who really gave HR and payroll the attention and, and uh, expertise that it needed to be successful. So during those 16 years, we've become both an SAP partner and also a SuccessFactors partner. And one of the ways in which uh, Joe and myself have uh, tried to uh, live up to that reputation of, of you know, serving the, the HR community in the SAP space is to create uh, HR solutions that really simplify and improve the experience uh, users and IT have with the SAP HR product and also with SuccessFactors. So the real, one of the reasons we do this is that uh, developing custom solutions for either SAP or success factors, uh, and in fact in IT in general, is a um, activity that is fraught with danger. I, I love this cartoon. It's one of my favorite cartoons. I've been, as uh, Katie uh, uh, introduced at the start of the, the webinar, 22 years in HR IT development. And, uh, it never fails to amaze me whenever one of these situations comes up uh, because it's all so well known and yet they, these um, pitfalls uh, in custom development happen so often. You know, if we take a look through the, the diagrams here or the, the cartoon here, you know, how often is it that uh, you know, the customer has uh, challenges in explaining what they want because they don't know the exact SAP terminology to be able to explain what they need? Or what about if the analyst doesn't capture the information provided by the customer, even if it was provided correctly? And then what about how the programmer programmed it? These are all these opportunities for things to go wrong in uh, custom development, which is why uh, at Aspire HR uh, Labs that we want to develop 
these uh, solutions which simplify and improve uh, the experience uh, with SAP HR and success factors. And if you take this diagram, which is kind of a representation of that cartoon, we can see the difference between this top line here, which is typically what happens when you do custom development, and how we like to approach it and why we think this is a better way of doing it. Um, with custom, typical uh, custom development, you have a process at the start where you identify your needs and you have to document them. You have to then turn that over to and explain it to developers to be able to develop them. That's the realization phase. You know, during that phase, other requirements are typically uncovered. Uh, things take longer than you anticipate to be able to build. And that often squeezes out the, the effort that goes into the testing, leading to a rush deployment and a lot of support costs and effort after the go-live when these things are discovered. And we believe by having software solutions like the employer reported that you're going to see today, that by eliminating custom development and using this different engagement model, you're really uh, eliminating a lot of project risks and also saving a lot of time and money. And we do this by uh, giving you, instead of a uh, process design um, blueprinting session, really a decision-making se uh, session. You know, by the end of the hour that we're going to spend together today, you should have a fairly good idea of whether the employer report a solution you'll see can actually help you. Um, and if you choose to, and if it does make sense for you, um, the delivery and in installation and, and implementation of this product is greatly reduced from a custom development uh, methodology because uh, we, w we supply the solutions to you as transports that you load into your system and it's really almost as simple as that to be able to get up and running uh, on the solutions. That gives plenty more time for testing and validation to give people the training they need to be able to use the solution to have smooth deployment and then significantly reduce your support costs both at immediately after go live and also on the ongoing basis. And it leads to substantial savings uh, for uh, our clients. And that's why we believe in software solutions. And we believe so much in software solutions that we have been uh, creating software solutions here at Aspire HR for the past 11 years. We've provided solutions across a, a whole spectrum of different uh, you know, SAP and success factors needs anywhere from uh, employer reporter that you'll see today through auditing and testing, data migration and integration, onboarding, and e-recruiting. Uh, and so we have an entire group here at Aspire HR that is set up uh, to support these products. These are not just accelerators or some code that we have. This is actually a division within Aspire HR uh, focused on this uh, service that we provide to our customers. Okay. So uh, stepping right into uh, employ, you know, uh, our uh, coverage of uh, employer reporter today, I'm going to move on to taking a look at how we simplify SAP HR payroll reports and interfaces. So you know, just as I um, outlined in the overall uh, business case for not doing custom development and uh, using solutions instead, if you take that down to focus on reports and interfaces, now I have here again modeled after that diagram we had in the, the introduction, the difference between a typical process of doing custom development for your reports and interfaces, um, maybe using ABAP programming or maybe using Excel, or using Employer Reporter to be able to develop those uh, interfaces or reports. You know, typically to be able to develop an interface or a report, there's a business need that's identified by a functional person who has to write up a specification, you, they have to wait for that specification to be prioritized and for an ABAP development resource to become available. And then there's a communication process where there's a meeting of minds between the developer and the functional person. And again, a, a cycle of availability uh, and prioritization of that, that communication process. Once that's complete, then the ABAP development takes place. And then uh, that ABAP development goes back to the functional person for approval, for testing, and often there's a feedback process where um, this has to be refined over time. And certainly, you know, uh, depending on the quality of the data that the uh, development person, the ABAP developer and the functional person is working with, is the quality of the product that's going to be turned out at the end. So this can be quite a long and arduous process to be able to get something develop, developed and often takes much longer than people anticipate. What we propose is our employee reporter a solution coupled with a functional person who has an understanding of the data within SAP to be able to create those um, 
reports and interfaces without having to do ABAP development and also without having to download that information to Excel and use VLOOKUP to uh, combine the information together. In fact, the solution is so powerful that it's not just a reporting solution, that it's also an interface solution as well. And we'll see how uh, we can create both benefit interfaces and other types of internal and external uh, vendor interfaces uh, with the solution. So some just some highlights in this presentation before we dive into the demo, uh, just to give you a sense of what Employer Reporter is. Employer Reporter is an ABAP add-on to your uh, SAP ECC system. It's not something that fits external uh, to SAP. It's not an extraction tool. It's not a business warehouse. It is a ABAP program that is delivered into your environment using a transport. Uh, it is accessing your personal administration, your org management, your benefits, time, and payroll data on a real-time basis. And it's made up of three components that you can see here. It's made up of a component which runs the reports and interfaces you create. Uh, it's made up of a component that allows you to design reports and interfaces. And it's made up of a component that allows you to test those interfaces as well. And the great thing about having this um, deployed within your SAP environment is not just that it is working real with your real-time data, that it's also going to leverage your existing SAP HR security roles as well. So this tool will only allow people to uh, access information that they already have access to today. So we uh, send you as part of the transport not just the code for this solution, but also the security roles as well to give people access to the tool, but they won't be able to see any data unless they actually have access to it through your SAP HR security roles. You can see is when we dive in to take a look at the, um, the uh, report running uh, portion of the solution, that it looks very similar to other SAP HR and payroll reports in the SAP system. And that's because we use the SAP uh, HR reporting uh, framework that is uh, supplied within SAP. Uh, and so you'll see, and it's called the, the PNP Logical Database for those more technical in the audience. And you can see that it provides all the kind of great selection criteria and security criteria uh, that you associate with your SAP HR reports. You'll see that you can do date selection both on key dates, date ranges, pay periods. You can do employee selection based on employee numbers and all kinds of um, enterprise uh, structure criteria as well as using your further selections, your search helps, and your sort orders as well. So what wouldn't be familiar to you is the two sections down here, which is the part in which you put in the report name uh, to run, and then also the options that we provide for the execution of the report. And we'll dive into those in more detail uh, as we go into the webinar. And certainly, um, having the reports uh, delivered, uh, having a tool that can create reports is great, but what's even better is that we provide a uh, set of uh, template reports with the tool as well. So in many cases, we have reports that are based on you know, the 11 years of uh, providing this solution uh, to our customers and the feedback that they have uh, asked us, you know, can the report do this, the report builder do this, can it do that? Uh, and also do being on projects and, and developing uh, reports and interfaces for clients um, during implementations. You know, we have come up with an entire catalog of reports that you can use uh, out of the box uh, with our solution. And these are, these are um, template uh, reports and interfaces that can be uh, also modified should you find one that's close to your need but actually maybe just needs a few more fields or you have a different uh, set of information that you'd like to include in it. So these are a great way to accelerate um, the uptake and the usability of the solution and also a great jumping off point to uh, create your own reports. Since this is also within uh, SAP and it's an SAP transaction and it's a standard SAP ABAP report, it's also very easy uh, to create your own transactions to attach our report uh, uh, running uh, component of Employer Reporter to that transaction and then deploy it to your easy access menu. In fact, you know, in this way that you're completing your own reports. Uh, what we have up here on the screen is just an example of the uh, template reports we saw in the earlier screen which have been attached to a transaction 
and now can be accessed through the easy access menu. Uh, these can be also assigned with your own security around them as well to make sure that you know they're deployed only to the people uh, that you intend them to be uh, deployed to within your organization. What we're seeing here is the report building uh, component of Employer Reporter. You'll see that it is a, a spreadsheet-like uh, interface in terms of creating reports. And what I've shown here on the screen is selecting a data source to be able to create a new column in the report. You'll be able to cut and paste uh, columns and also be able to select new columns as well. And the great thing about this, again, being part of um, the SAP uh, environment is that we are dynamically pulling uh, all of the uh, fields and data sources uh, that are included in the solution. So if you have custom info types, uh, either in PA uh, or in your uh, organizational uh, um, management uh, or custom fields on your info types, uh, then we, can, we will also be able to uh, pull that information in and it will be seamlessly part of the tool. There's no uh, coding or setup or ABAP that's needed on, from, from our part to be able to access custom uh, info types uh, through the tool. And what's also special about this tool is uh, not only does it select and deal with the key issue of uh, ad hoc query, uh, the SAP query, and uh, the um, standard SAP reports that are delivered because it can access all of those different uh, data sources, is it can not just pull the data sources, but it allows you to manipulate those data sources as well. So in this case, you can see that you know I've pulled up a field. Uh, in this case, I've pulled up the employee number from InfoType 1, um, but I have all different ways of manipulating that, um, that content. I can edit the length of it. I can give it a new column heading. I can change things from uppercase to lowercase. I can left and right uh, align them. I can translate them into something else. I can edit the output so that it has different uh, masks applied to the, the output, date masks, text uh, masks, and also numeric uh, formatting masks as well. And I can also filter out information as well. Uh, so you don't have to have all of the records, uh, and you can just filter to the information you need. We'll also take a look in more detail at lookups and also functions uh, in the next section. So a lookup is our way of adding uh, functionality that's similar to Microsoft. So we take the concept from Microsoft where you have functions uh, that you can add to cells. What we have uh, included in Employer Reporter is, a, is a, a number of our standard uh, functions, one of them that you can see here on the screen, which is Get Chief Field, um, which when applied to uh, a field will pull back specific information using some parameters that are passed to it. So in this case, you know, we're looking at get chief field, and this is a, a really nice uh, piece of functionality, which says when applied to any employee's information, instead of returning the employee's value for that field, return their chief's field. So if you apply this uh, get chief function to the employee's name, instead of the column containing the uh, employee's name, it'll include the chief's name. The same could be said of their cost center, or their org unit, maybe their phone number, or any other details that you care to include. Another very powerful piece of functionality is the lookup tab. So in the lookup tab, we're able to join information from the SAP system uh, into the reports uh, that doesn't need to be uh, employee specific. So some good examples of that is that uh, with the lookup, we can join in information uh, from the employee's uh, personal administration or org management info types. So this is just, in that sense, it's just a different way of accessing that same information. We can also, as you can see in this example on the screen, we could pull in SAP configuration. In this case, I'm pulling up wage type configuration tables. You could pull up, in fact, any uh, HR configuration table in the system and include it in any report. Uh, we can also pull in any client's custom configuration and data tables as well. I'm sure all of you have custom uh, data sets and custom tables and custom configuration that you've, you've set up over the years. And using the lookup um, feature that we have here, you'll be able to include those in your reports as well. 
and also with the right security assignments that we provide uh, as part of our default security. Um, we can also allow people to connect to financial, CRM, PM, or any other non-HI configuration and data in the system as well. So if you want to combine some uh, HR and finance data in a, a report, uh, we can do that as well. So I've talked about it uh, a little bit at the start of the uh, webinar. I, I'm sure many people have uh, reporting needs around HR, but probably one very overlooked part of, uh, and probably something that not not pe people don't think is, you know, may not even be possible, uh, but Employer Reporter has the capabilities of being able to create uh, interfaces as well out of HR. This is probably one of the most, uh, you know, challenging parts of HR. We know that employee data goes out to so many different systems and maintaining uh, dozens, if not hundreds of interfaces back and forth um, becomes very tedious. And with Employer Reporter, we've shown uh, repeatedly for clients that we've been able to handle the most complex uh, reporting requirements, uh, as shown by this example on the screen here of a HIPAA 834 interface where we have over a dozen different record types uh, all cohabitating together with header, header records, detail records, and summary records as well. Uh, and you can see an example here to the right of the type of output that we've produced here with different types of uh, field and record uh, delimiters uh, in a variable length, uh, pulling in information from all different sources throughout uh, SEPHR. And finally, the third component of uh, the employer reporter is our regression testing tool. You know, I just mentioned a moment ago about how many clients have, you know, 50, 100, you know, we just dealt with a, a client who said that they had 700 different uh, reports and interfaces uh, within their system. And when you think about, you know, what happens when you come to have an upgrade or year-end support packs, you know, how do you test that these interfaces are working successfully? And, and what we think is a, a key differentiator for our solution is that uh, we have a regression testing tool which will allow you to um, basically automate the testing of these interfaces such that uh, it takes it from a, you know, a very uh, manual and time-consuming task to test every one of your reports and interfaces when something changes uh, to a automated process that's simply a click the button and it tells you where the differences and the changes are uh, as outlined on the screen. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to jump into the demo. I have uh, approximately 10 reports and interfaces that I'd like to uh, show you, uh, both from running them, and then also we'll delve into uh, uh, one or two of them to see how we created them. So I'm going to log on to SAP. And you can see, uh, as we highlighted in the presentation, that these transactions, uh, firstly for uh, Aspire HR's payroll launch suite, and then also for the individual transactions for the employer reporter uh, running the reports and set up the reports, uh, can be added to your easy access menu because they're simply uh, ABAP um, uh, tools that are in within your system. So uh, we can also see that uh, under the employer, we, we talked about in the presentation, the employer reporter templates. And I have here all the different templates that we have in the system, uh, which have been attached to a transaction and now part of my easy access menu as well. So you can see that, you know, from the perspective of benefits, we have benefit um, templates for each of the different types of benefits, as well as uh, within each of them, a, uh, a, a template for looking at the dependents, for looking at the, the details of the plan, for doing audits of enrollment, for doing eligibility enrollments, and also doing summaries uh, for censuses as well. And so the, the uh, reports and interfaces I'd like to demo for you today uh, is the set here. I'm going to start off with probably uh, a, a simple one, one that makes sense. It's, it's dealing with, uh, it's an employee master data uh, report. You might ask why is it that we need an employee da master data report when we have an uh, ad hoc query, uh, but I, I'm going to pull this up now and show you some of the, the key differences that we're able to do 
uh, with the solution in comparison with ad hoc grid, even just around uh, personal administration data. So when I click on this, it takes me to run the report. You can see I've selected a period, and uh, I've selected a group of employees, and I've specified a specific uh, report to run. And when I run it, it's going to come back and show to the screen the, um, the master data uh, that I'm uh, requesting. So you can see I've pulled back things like the employee number, employee name. I'm pulling these from uh, InfoType 1. The hire date I'm pulling from InfoType 41, and we'll go into more details in a moment about how I pulled in InfoType 41, because that's obviously you know, a, a challenge within the SAP environment because of the way that there are multiple dates within the InfoType 41. I have my employee status, which has been translated into a text, and I have my employee group and employee group description, both as code and text. I have my company code, cost center, personal areas and descriptions, personal areas, sub areas and descriptions, positions. And you'll see I've also pulled in the supervisor name as well, and we'll take a look at those. That's a function that allows us to look up the supervisor, um, which is a similar kind of relationship as the manager as well. I've pulled in the annual salary from InfoType 8, and I've also pulled in the wage type from InfoType 8 as well, so that we can see uh, the uh, main way in which people get paid. You can see that uh, regardless of whether this is a uh, direct entry or whether it's an indirect valuation, the amount has been returned for the uh, employee. You can see that uh, from a social security number perspective, I have formatted it so it's easier to read. I've also pulled up ethnic origin from InfoType 77 and translated into the text. I have my birth date formatted the way I like it. And I've pulled up the employee's permanent residence, which is employee sub, uh, the uh, InfoType 6 subtype 1 for permanent residence. I've also pulled in from the communication subtypes, the business extension, the business phone and extension, as well as the email as well. And you can see from um, the business phone and extension, we have both uh, the number and also the extension, even though these are joined together uh, in the uh, information, the way it's stored in SAP. So you can see that you know some of the key things here here are that. You know, there's one row per employee. You know, one of the challenges with ad hoc query is if you were to join together information from uh, multiple data sources, if you don't use a single key date, then you'll end up with multiple records. But with an employer reporter, you have a choice of either outputting a single record per employee or as many uh, uh, entries uh, for the employee that are effective within the, within the selection range. So let's take a look at how I created that. So if I go now to the employer reporter setup, well, let's go to payroll launch suite first and go to employer reporter, and we go to the setup button. If I was to, I can I can search for the um, search for the um, template that I was using. It tells me I should copy this uh, because we'll be continually delivering updates to you. So there's a protection uh, for the templates that are uh, delivered. It has its own namespace called template. Uh, and you can see here, uh, to be able, we have many different options in terms of how to create the report, in terms of whether it should go to the SAP server for an, inter for an interface or save it onto your PC for an interface or, or to put it to a screen. But to create a basic report, all I need is the name of the interface, a uh, description of it, and also to click on ALV report. If we had multiple uh, records, we could create new records for it. Um, if we were trying to not just use this, this uh, master employee master data as delivered, but we wanted to uh, create our own version of it, I would do copy. And I can create something under my name, and I could simply put in what I wanted to call it. Now, if I if I wanted to create my own report, I can click on Create, and I would just create the report. 
In this case, I'm going to take a look at uh, the report uh, just as part of the, the webinar. So um, if I go to the record fields, I can see all of the fields that I used to be able to create the report output that I saw. You can see that if I put my cursor on a field, that I get an F4 help. And then I can see all the different source fields that I can include, uh, data sources that I can include in my report. If I want to add a new field, I simply um, put my cursor on here and I can either copy it and then paste it again. And if I don't like it, I can delete it. Or if I want to create a new field, I just click on Create. To create a field, let's say that I want to have um, something from InfoType 1, I would pull up my source, click in my InfoType, and choose whichever field that I wanted to include. Let's say that I wanted to include payroll area, I would just click on payroll area, and it would automatically fill in that column on the report. In this case, I'm going to remove it. Now, the first thing that we talked about uh, in the, the demo was the challenges of dealing with InfoType 41. You'll notice that when um, I have InfoType 41 and I click on this screen, this is where some of the magic of the additional functionality uh, for modifying the contents of each field takes place. So when I click on next screen, I see all of the different fields that we saw earlier, all the different tabs that we saw earlier, and I also see this InfoType 41 tab. And what this allows me today to do is to specify which of the uh, date types I want to populate that field. And not only that, I can give it an order in which they appear. You'll notice also that instead of it being named after the uh, name of the field being date, date type, I've actually chosen my own, uh, high, own name for the field here. I've called it higher date. If I was to remove that, it will default back to the uh, standard text, or I can use the text that I've given it. If I want to have a text for the field, I can uh, click on it, and you can see that for employee group and subgroup, I have chosen to have a text displayed. And then you can also see for uh, name, I have a repeat of name because I already have the employee's name. Uh, if I click on here for, uh, for first name uh, I, and I go to the function tab, you can see that I've used get supervisor field. And as I discussed uh, in the presentation, if I use uh, one of our functions here, then it will, um, in case this function, it will actually look up the supervisor's value instead of the employee's value for that field, which is the first name. If I scroll down further, you can see how we include uh, subtypes. In this case, for uh, InfoType 6, we can choose the different subtypes and have the information come from specific subtypes. And you can also see that even though uh, for the um, ID, for um, the for the uh, business phone number and the extension is part of just one large field uh, within SAP, we're able to split that field into two different fields and to give it two different titles as well, uh, all from subtype 20 or using subtype 10 for the business email address. We have uh, certainly a warning if you're going to exit uh, the uh, interface, the uh, the report without uh, saving it, it will warn you in advance. In this case, I want to discard it because it is a, a template report. Looking at some of the other reports as we move forward, the next one I want to look at is the department annual salary report. You know, often you want to see a headcount of how many people um, belong to your department and what their salaries are. So again, I've selected a group of employees and a time range and included the report. And, and when I run it, you can see that it comes up not just with my annual salary and, and uh, the information about the employees, but a count of the employees as well. And you notice it didn't come back just as an ALV report. It came back with a, 
a display uh, variant applied to it as well. So you know we can always expand this to see the individual employees uh, as that that are part that make up the, the different count. But you know this ability to apply display variants, as you can see up here, these are the changing the, the display variants here that allow you to say which columns are included, which ones are sorted, and which ones are uh, summed. Uh, we can actually save that using this button here, a standard piece of SAP functionality. And then uh, we are able to, in, in um, Employer Reporter, for every record that we include uh, within the report, we can apply a display variant so that there's no need to select that. And when it comes back, it will appear exactly the way it should uh, for whoever is running the report. Now, the next report I want to show you is an, uh, an employee addre uh, address summary report. So in this case, uh, again, we're outputting one of, the, one of the challenges when we turn over uh, the management of our uh, addresses um, to the employee is that they don't always fill out all of their addresses, their mailing address, their permanent address, home address, emergency contacts. Um, and what we've done here is created a report where we've translated each of these different subtypes for address into a yes or no answer. If no response is recorded in SAP, we translate it to a no. And if there is something there, we translate it to a yes. So this is a very simple uh, report and very powerful in terms of highlighting where people uh, have not completed uh, this information, you know, potentially through ESS or, or turned in that information. The next report I'm sure everybody is excited to take a look at is the, uh, the payroll register. And this is probably one of the most requested reports that we have within uh, Employer Reporter uh, because of the need to combine personal, uh, uh, personal employee information, demographic information with payroll results information. In particular, people often ask for this payroll register to be able to reconcile uh, an employee's paychecks uh, to ensure that everything is correct, not just to prefer per employee, but also for an entire area, uh, payroll area or another part of the enterprise structure. And the key to this is being able to get, again, all of the employee's information onto a single line and to be able to create individual columns with employee re um, payroll results uh, summed into those columns. So instead of, like many of the SAP uh, standard reports, that there are a list format where there are multiple lines per employee, one for each wage type, what we've done here is taken typical uh, personal uh, demographic information, much like what you saw in the master data information, and then combined it with payroll results information. The pay period information from uh, the uh, results um, table, and then also uh, the amounts that represent things like the salary and hourly earnings, any overtime earnings, any additional pay earnings, leave, bonuses, that add up to being the total gross pay. And then all of the deductions from the gross pay to get to our net pay. The imputed income and pre-tax deductions, federal earnings that uh, calculate the federal uh, taxes, and then also any kind of other taxes uh, at different levels. Any post-tax deductions, any retroactive payments to come to the net pay. And whether we total this across from the uh, an employee level or from a, a column level, a category level, uh, these should all reconcile to each other. So this is a very uh, popular uh, report, something that, that is not delivered by SAP, but every uh, payroll manager wants. And we're going to take a, a look at this report within uh, the Employer Reporter Setup. And you can see that when we go to the records fields, we'll see that we have not just infotype information, but we also have payroll results information as well. And we have payroll results information coming from not just the RT table, but also from the uh, VERSC table as well. And you, you don't need to remember these details 
in terms of these different tables. If I was to um, go to this field and let's take a look at the net pay, how that's created, when I do a lookup, I go and I can see payroll results. I can see US. I can choose the table that this information is going to come from. In this case, it's the results table. And then I choose the field that I want to see output on the screen, in which case it would be the amount. I've given it its own um, title because in this column I'm not just going to output all of the amounts. I'm going to output the net pay. So that would be the slash uh, 560. And the way in which I do that is, and I've called it that I'm, because I'm to, that's what's going to be in the column, I go to the next screen and you can see this time instead of having the InfoType 41 like we did when we were looking at InfoType 41, we now have a payroll results tab. And when I go there, I can see that I have filtered the results that I want to appear in this column to be uh, where the wage type, and this is all in drop-downs here, the wage type is a specific uh, wage type, and I've been chosen to include it. I could also choose other wage types and choose to exclude it as well. Now, the payroll results functionality in terms of including results uh, is very powerful because obviously, you know, payroll is a very complex complex area of SAP. So we provide multiple different ways of uh, requesting the payroll results that you want to have included in this report within the selection period. We can select payroll results where the, re uh, the results period, the full period, falls within the selection criteria, where the run date falls within the criteria, or where the pay date falls within the criteria. And we can also choose whether to show you the um, original amounts that appeared on the paycheck, or we can show you the current active results as well. So that's after all of the recalculations. Um, if this box is checked, it will show the current amount for that, for that period. If I was to select multiple wage types uh, within this um, selection criteria, um, I can also choose to sum all the results that fall within this range as well. So if I select multiple uh, results as you know, I've done in my um, my salaries and, and wages. I have chosen to sum all results for any of these wages that turn up within this period, uh, within this, this uh, selection range for uh, wage types. Okay. So the next report that I'd like to look at is called uh, a Employee Social Security uh, Reconciliation Report. So one of the challenges uh, that uh, clients tell us about is being able to reconcile their social security amounts, making sure that they're coming across correctly, making sure that the wage types that should be there are included in it, what happens if they uh, occurred later in the uh, later in the year instead of at the start of the year, those numbers will be off. And so uh, this report here um, uses both the employee demographic information, the payroll results, and also a calculation to tell um, the person running the report the differences. And you can see here I have demographic information. I have my year-to-date employee social security earnings. This is a sum of all the wage types which are uh, considered for FICA earnings. And then I have what SAP has accumulated in the slash 703 wage type. And I've calculated the difference by subtracting this column from this column. And I can see the differences. You can see here this 40,000 is what I tallied. 40,072 is what SAP tallied, so I have a $72 difference. I've also been able to do that for the individual actual taxes that are taken as well. So here, this is, this is an example of how we're using uh, our calculation functionality uh, to create differences in the report or highlight differences in the report. The next uh, report I'd like to look at is the health plan details report. So in this health, uh, one of the challenges with benefit details is that there's a lot of information that you see on the infotypes that is not actually included in the, um, the data that's stored in the background. It's all when you go into PA20 and PA30 and look at a benefits infotype, it's all dynamically being pulled uh, and calculated. So things like costs um, are not included, and so it's very hard to report on them. And so what we've done is include the ability 
uh, not just to pull the infotype information for all of the different infotypes, uh, benefit infotypes, but also to include the cost information. You can see here that I've pulled in all the different types of costs, uh, as well as some of this uh, additional summary information that um, SAP provides, as well as uh, another example of something that we're providing here is our, another function we call if. And if is exactly just like the, the uh, Excel if. The if basically allows you to set up a condition and then um, report on that condition. In this case, uh, we have a employee plus spouse check. And in this case, it tells me for this employee that uh, the, they are enrolled in employee plus spouse, but it's invalid. So if I go and check this, I see they are indeed enrolled in employee plus spouse, but I see that they have no dependents. So that is invalid, uh, an invalid enrollment. You can see the same thing for employee plus family. I would assume that they would have at least uh, one, uh, sorry, if two uh, dependents enrolled if they wanted family. Otherwise, they'd be employee plus single or, or plus child or plus spouse. So this way, we've turned a report of information into an audit report. The next report I'd like to look at is a planned working time recon report. I think this one's very interesting um, because it is a reconciliation of what we say on InfoType 7 that we expect people to work and then what they actually put in for their InfoTypes, uh, their attendance InfoTypes and their absence InfoTypes. And you can see this time when the report came up, it didn't come up with uh, directly to the screen. In fact, there are three different reports that are being created uh, here as part of the one report. So for the absence details, that's the information that's in InfoType 2001, I'm bringing back for every person multiple records because what I want to do is pull up all of their absences for this period and then sum them up and then combine them with their attendances and show the hours versus what we expected them uh, to work for that period. We can also send the, see the attendance details of everybody, all the attendance records for that, that period of time. And then what we have is what we call a summary record here, where I have taken the summary of this information, all the, the absences and all of the attendances. And I've got the employee details here, as well as from InfoType 7, my expectation on their work percentage and their work hours per week. But then I also have this column total hours, which is actually the summarized information from the other two records. So in this case, we have both a, a total, a, a, a summary record, a validation, as well as also being able to look at the underlying uh, employee details as well. So this report with its multiple records is a good transition into how we create uh, interfaces. So uh, one of the things that um, we're very pleased about here is our partnership with uh, Ceridian's uh, tax outsourcing services. Uh, Ceridian uh, had a, uh, a discovery or a search for a provider of report and interface services within SAP. Uh, they spoke to a number of different uh, services firms in the area in terms of you know solutions or answers that could be provided. And they set it on Aspire Chart to provide this service. And one of the reasons was, was just how easy it would be to create interfaces um, using our tool. Uh, here we have the, the report layout uh, for uh, Ceridian. And uh, when we drill into it, you'll see that um, one of the functions that I have here is that I've chosen from the front screen an override, and I'm choosing to put it to the screen. And this is because this is actually an interface. It's going to be written to my PC, but if I turn on the override, I'll be able to review that interface first on the screen. And I can see the layout here. It's a five record layout. I have header records, which is just typical interface information with dates and times and um, key field values. I have the current uh, details, which is all of the specific employee details as at today's date. Then I also have all of their work details uh, for the selection for the time period as well, for their quarterly reporting. And not just their work details, but also I use the lookup uh, functionality that we provided to go find 
all of the workers' comp information from all the different US-specific tables uh, within the system, the T5U, 2.5, and 2.8, uh, and, and all the other tables um, that are US-specific uh, configuration so that I could accurately complete uh, this information about things like Alaskan area codes or Wyoming um, officer codes as well. Um, so depending, you know, is very easy and they were very impressed with how for each of the different states uh, we were able to simply add a column and pull back the information that was needed either from, from SAP uh, employee master data or from configuration data that they needed for uh, quarterly unemployment uh, filings. The great thing here is after I've looked at that and validated it, I can just unclick override, I can run this report, and now it'll go directly to my uh, PC. Or, at my choice, it could also go to my SAP application server. We also had a client, uh, we talked about having uh, functions. Uh, we had a client who said um, that their need for uh, their reporting, they had to have all of their cost centers uh, reported by a financial cost center grouping. And that's information that's not within SAP, and in fact, it's not even a configuration item. It's a functional lookup um, that is part of the FI module. And what we're able to do is create a function, a custom function for them, which they can now include in any report, which will translate any cost center into its cost center grouping and allow them through basically just a click of buttons to include that very important field on all of their reports. The uh, next report that I'd like to show you is our um, uh, uh, an InfoType 14 payment audit report. So I've showed you how to, in the uh, payroll results uh, register, uh, to be able to pull up specific wage types that have been keyed in. But in this report, we're going to pull up dynamically uh, different wage types. This uh, report is a deduction reconciliation report. Obviously, there are Sometimes deductions are not taken in your system, and they don't turn up the payroll, and they'll end up in your arrears or deductions not taken. And what this report will do was will allow you to um, pull in those reports and show you um, for each wage type what was on InfoType 14, and then what was on what was recorded in the um, payroll results, and then what the difference was as well. So that you'll be able to go through it and see that. You know, for a United Way deductions, we have a group of people who didn't have any United Way deductions, but we also have um, a number of people who have some kind of small difference on their union dues as well. And in each of them, it is dynamically taking the wage type here and doing looking up in the payroll results the wage type that it finds in this column here. And just recently, uh, we had a client ask us to produce a uh, tax roll-up register. And so the idea for this uh, tax roll-up register was that to get a quarterly and year-to-date uh, summarization for every employee for every tax element within the system. This one takes a little while to run, so I've run it in advance. And you can see that um, using this dynamic wage type lookup uh, concept, I've been able to create a report, and let's just take a look, look at Samuel Rainier here, that for every taxable earning, every wage type that was generated within the system for this year or within the time period, for, in this case tax year 2013, um, there has been a an tax element created for every tax type and tax authority that the um, Mr. Samuel Rainier uh, um, belonged to, as well as a quarterly, first quarter, a second quarter, a third quarter, a fourth quarter, and a year-to-date balance. And it's pulling back not just uh, individual wage types, but it's pulling back for each of these info type, uh, all, all the slash three wage types for, for the specific tax type, as well as the slash six, the slash sevens, and then also the tax has taken the slash fours. So you can see for something like the person, Samuel Rainier's federal unemployment, that it cuts out after, um, although the earnings are there, the taxable earnings is capped at 7000 in the first quarter, and then 
and also seven thousand for the for the year, and then also a deduction of forty two dollars taken in in Q one, which was also the total for the year. Okay. Finally, let's take a look at how we do the uh, um, regression testing because I think this is a huge difference for our solution. So one of the challenges is, say you have all these wonderful reports are in there in your system, and somebody and you apply a year-end tax update. What what do you? Uh, how do you test them? How do you make sure nothing has changed? And and what we have here is this tool that will allow you to create a test a base or a baseline of report output by creating a list of all different variants. This is a list of variants that are in the system that runs employer reporter in different ways. So you would set up one variant for every report that you have in the system. And it allows you to generate a file, which becomes your baseline. And then after your changes, you would generate another file. And then uh, it allows you to do a compare of these two files. You can see two different jobs that have run at different times. And then when I run this comparison, it will go through each of these files and tell me um, that there is no difference uh, between the difference between those two reports. And then it will tell me when comparing output, here's my match, here's the, the lines in the reports that don't match, and here is uh, warnings for things that are slightly different. So in this way, instead of taking dozens or a hundred different reports and running them and trying to look through them and figure out whether things have changed, you'll be able to do your validation within um, a very short period of time. Literally, simply running a baseline and running a follow-up uh, of the exact same test criteria and then having this tool go through the uh, files and show you the differences. So I thank you. Uh, we're at almost at the close of the hour. I'd like to see if there's any questions that we could take. And, uh, and we'll appreciate you if people uh, have time. I will, I'll sit and answer questions uh, uh, for as long as people would like to remain on the phone. Great, Brian. Thank you. We do have quite a few questions for you. Um, the first one of which is, can reports be run in the background? Yes, they can. Uh, since this is an SAP uh, ABAP report, it is scheduled uh, like uh, other uh, SAP reports using F9 or the selection criteria up in the top left-hand uh, portion of the SAP screen. Okay. Uh, does Employee Reporter come with Payroll One Suite, or is it considered a separate product? It can be part of Payroll Launch Suite, uh, or it can be purchased separately. Payroll Launch Suite is uh, HR infotype auditing, payroll results auditing, cloning of employees, parallel testing, and employer reporter. Uh, and so we often bundle that together. There are large discounts uh, for purchasing the five products together. Um, and we often recommend to clients that these are, since these are key issues that all SAP clients uh, that run HR typically run into. Okay. Um, let's see what's how does Employee Reporter differ from standard SAP reports? Well, it differs from ad hoc query uh, in the ways that it can produce. Uh, it includes you know, information from personal administration, org management benefits, payroll, time results, configuration, uh, and it allows you to edit the fields uh, to get them exactly the way that you want them to be uh, for both you know, reports and interfaces. And it also allows you to uh, output to an interface and also produce either a single record per employee or multiple records per employee. Okay. How long does it take to implement Employee Reporter? Uh, it's really very quick to, to implement the solution. Um, it, as mentioned, it is a transport uh, that is delivered uh, to your system. And uh, it is as simple as getting your basis people to install it. And uh, the training typically takes a day uh, to do the training, and then people are up and running. Uh, we encourage during the training people to bring their reports and interfaces that they you know that they need an example solved by the end of the meeting, and and often people are able to walk away with you know uh, at least one answer to a pressing uh, need that they have. So there is training available. 
Uh, yes, absolutely. So training is available with a tool as part of the purchase uh, or as follow-up uh, as you have turnover or larger groups that you want to roll this out to. Can you integrate custom info types? Yes. Um, it dynamically pulls in the information from uh, your SAP uh, data dictionary. So as you add custom info types or custom fields to your uh, info types, uh, it is able to read that information and include it. There's no um, ABAP changes that need to take place for that, that to be, uh, for that to work for you. Can you explain once again, how to avoid multiple records in the rec in the report output design. Sure. So in, and I think it's probably best to take a look at uh, an individual result. So if I was to go to look at employer reporter, if I was to look at uh, payroll register, and if I was to go to look at individual fields, um, at the moment these fields because uh, it will all output as a single single line per employee. If I want to see more employee records, I would just click recurring fields and it would return all of the records within the uh, date selection range. How does employee inter how does employee reporter interface with SAP security? Um, for example, what would be returned if someone did not have security to see pay results? and ran a report that included them, for instance? Uh, they'd see an empty field. Uh, we use the standard SAP um, authorization objects and we check them. Um, a lot of the times we're getting the information from the infotypes for using the functions that already have built-in SAP security and we get the payroll results using the standard SAP um, methods that have the built-in security in them. Some of our questions are overlapping, so I'm combining them as we go. Um, a common question is around pricing. Okay. Um, so we think one of the other uh, key value propositions for the solution is that it's attractively priced for smaller organizations. Uh, it can be as low as uh, $30,000 to license the solution. You know, for the amount, you know, we have calculators that will show, you know, the the amount of effort that, can, that it can save. You know, if you estimate 20 or 40 or 80 hours uh, for a standard report or interface or, you know, a more difficult one, it, it pays for itself uh, extremely quickly. Uh, Payroll Launch Suite uh, is available at, uh, you know, for the smallest organizations at, um, you know, slightly more than that uh, because of the, the grouping of the, the entire products together, the five products together, we offer a group discount or a, a um, package discount. Okay. And I think the last question we'll take, because uh, we are out of time, is does employee reporter run times tend to be faster, slower, or about the same as SAP ad hoc or other standard SAP reports? Uh, we believe that, that it's quicker. Uh, we've timed it and optimized it, uh, and so uh, it runs uh, you know, quicker than uh, many of the different reports out there. So. Uh, we feel very comfortable with that, and we've seen results uh, showing that it is at least as fast, if not faster, than those uh, standard uh, ad hoc reporting tools. Okay. Any final thoughts, Brian? Uh, I would uh, certainly. This is one of our most popular topics because it is a challenge for every SAP HR client. So I, it's something that I hear. Uh, over and over again about uh, clients needing to take multiple uh, SAP reports and download them and do pivot tables and VLOOKUPs to be able to get the information they want. And I think, you know, when we've talked to them and heard about their requirements, we've looked at the interfaces that they that they want to create, the different vendors, you know, it's almost, uh, you know, with 90%, 95%, you know, capabilities, we've been able to replicate those reports uh, in our solution. There are some uh, reports that we can't uh, uh, create. Well, there's some things that uh, you know it's not it, it can't do. I'm not going to say that uh, uh, everything can be done in Employer Reporter, but certainly if you can eliminate uh, the vast majority of your reporting needs um, from having to go to either Microsoft Excel or, or ABAP, then you've you've really.
uh, struck a, a home run, especially at the, uh, the, you know, the value proposition that we're offering. Again, this uh, webinar has been recorded. You can reach out to me directly at kbrown at aspirehr.com or to Brian, whose information is on the screen. If you would like a copy of the recording, it should be available uh, today's Tuesday, so it should be available on Thursday. Thank you very much, and I appreciate you joining us.